Periodic trends, electron affinity and electronegativity. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves again of the effective nuclear charge and the fact that it increases across a period. And we've spent quite a bit of time discussing this. The attraction for outer electrons or valence electrons for the nucleus increases as we go across a period. And also remember that the principal quantum number n in the sense of the size of the orbital increases as we go down a column. And so all of this leads to valence electrons feeling increasing nuclear charge as we go across a row or a period and decreasing nuclear charge as we go down a column or a group. All right, so the electron affinity is sometimes a difficult periodic trend to picture, okay? And what this is is a measure of an atom's tendency to gain an electron. So in other words, how much does it want another electron? Sometimes they don't want another electron at all. Sometimes it actually makes them less stable. You have to add extra energy to get them to take an electron. And um, sometimes they really do want one. And when you give them an electron, they release energy and they're more stable, okay? Now electron affinity is high when there's a strong attraction for an incoming electron. And so that means that more energy is released, okay? So that's a negative electron affinity, so energy is released. And electron affinity values can be negative or positive or sometimes approximately zero. So any of those are possible. Sometimes you have to put energy in to give an atom an extra electron, which makes it less stable. So chlorine has the most negative value for electron affinity. And so what that means is that it releases more energy when an extra electron is gained by a chlorine atom to form a, chlori a chloride anion. Okay, So this basically says that there's a strong attraction for that extra electron by chlorine. Okay, And so the largest amount of energy of all of the elements is released when chlorine gains an electron. Okay, now all the halogens do release energy, but chlorine releases the most. Okay, so now there are lots and lots of little exceptions to these trends for electron affinity, and we are definitely not going to cover that or discuss them in detail, but in general, electron affinity increases with increasing effective nuclear charge, okay, and in general, electron affinity decreases as n increases or as the orbitals get larger and the valence electrons are farther and farther away. Okay? Okay, so here's just a chart showing all of these electron affinities, okay, with atomic number. All right? So you can see, like I say, lots of jigs and jags here. Okay, so here are the s block elements, okay, and then the p block. Okay, so like I say, lots of jig, jigs and jags in here, so you're not going to be responsible for knowing that, just the general trends with electron affinity and generally knowing what it is. So basically it's an attraction for an incoming electron by that atom. All right, now electronegativity. Now this is going to be really important as we start to discuss whether a molecule is polar or not later on in the course, okay? And so electronegativity is the ability of an atom in a molecule to attract electrons toward itself and away from a neighboring atom, okay? So basically how greedy it is with electrons, how much it draws electrons toward itself. And so smaller atoms with high uh, Z effective values, those have the highest electronegativity values. So fluorine has the highest electronegativity, okay? So fluorine is very, very greedy, does not want to share electrons, wants to draw them away from other atoms in the molecule. All right, and in general, electronegativity increases across a period with increasing effective nuclear charge, and it decreases down a group as the orbitals get bigger. Okay, so that follows the same trend as electron affinity. So electro electronegativity increases across a period. Okay, so again, here's a little chart showing 
the variation in electronegativity. These are Pauling electronegativities, okay? And so we can see that basically the trend is increasing as you go across a period. Then you pretty much start over when you go to the next row, okay? And again, go across period, then start over. You can see there are a few little jigs and jags in here when you go through the transition metals, okay? Again, you won't be responsible for that, but you should know that it exists. So in general, that increasing effective nuclear charge across a period leads to increasing electron affinity, so more attraction for an incoming electron, and increasing electronegativity. So basically the greediness pulling electrons away from neighboring atoms toward itself. So as you have a higher and higher effective nuclear charge, then you're going to have increasing attraction for incoming electrons and increasing greediness or electronegativity for electrons from neighboring atoms. And also, in general, as you go down a group, you're going to have decreasing electron affinity, so there's going to be less attraction as you go down a group, and you're also going to have decreasing electronegativity. So elements are less electronegative as you go down a group. All right, and so example problems are going to be posted separately, so look for those.